Good morning, I'm Nikki Stanzione. And I'm Kristen Van Dyke. And this is New Mexico Style. It is Friday. TGIF, Ooh. that's what I say. It is a okay, good Okay, did this week go fast for you or slow for you? Slow, and I Me even had slow. the day off the other day when I didn't feel well. Oh yeah, and it still went slow. It still went really slow. Because everybody I've been talking to has said, oh, this week has flown by, and I'm like, not for no. me. And normally it does fly by, this week has been. I didn't feel like that this week. Long. I think the heat is really making it drag. I think it is. I mean, yeah. I love summertime, but this is getting out of control. Oh, in the boring standard. way for me. It makes my job a little bit. I know, and people blame you. It's yeah. like, thanks a lot. I just did it. And I, I did the weather too. I used to hate when people did it. And I'm a hypocrite. I just did it. I said, thanks a lot to you. Like, you have anything to do with Mother Nature's Stop. Don't shoot misery. the messenger. Don't shoot the Don't messenger. shoot the messenger. Okay, so you asked me if I, if I felt like the week went slow. I'm going to ask you a question now. Yeah. Are you a carb lover? Yes. Carbs are my weakness. Really? Yes. Me Bread, too. Bread, potatoes, anything. I mm -hmm. love carbs. Oh, yeah. And try growing up like in a family in New York with a lot of pasta. Pasta Ooh. and pizza. My whole life has been about carbs. I'll tell mm -hmm. you that. So that hasn't changed living in New Mexico. Now I'm just addicted to things like tortillas. And exactly. So, uh, take a look at this. I want you to take a look at this. Okay. See that? You uh -huh. are looking at the Idaho potato truck. Now this big spud is on a seven month <laughs> cross country tour and is parked right outside our studios right now. This is a live shot. Now later in this half hour, we're going to find out why the Idaho <laughs> potato truck is here in Albuquerque. Okay, hmm. so here are some fun facts about this. So this potato, okay. obviously seven months, you know, it would have eyes and roots coming out of it if it were <laughs> real. So yeah. obviously not real, but if it were, it would take more than 10,000 years to grow it. Whoa. Take nearly three years to bake it and make <laughs> more than 30,000 servings of mashed potatoes or more than one million fries. Think about that. That's years and years and years and years and years and years and years of food. Talk about supersizing okay. your fries. Mashed potatoes, but <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Years to bake. Years. Well, let me say that's meals. That's meals for years. If you oh, divide yeah. that by 365 into 30,000, I mean, yeah. that's a lot of years. It's a, it's a lot of years. But I'll tell you what, I'm excited that they're here because I think that means for us carb lovers that we're going to get a little taste of some potato or something starchy today. What do you think? I think it does mean we're going to get the carbs right before the weekend. Yeah, right? that's okay. We can work it off. We All can right. work it off. I'm into this body language bar fusion thing. I'm, I'm on, I'm on a roll. I'm doing something because I'm not doing anything right well, now. Well, we've reversed just once. This is the only time I'm I've like, done I'm, something I'm doing a couch potato. <gasps> Right, Let's check ahead. in with a non-couch potato. She's been zooming her way through the week. KRQ News 13 anchor Elizabeth Alvarez with this morning's headlines. Good morning, madam. Hey, good morning, ladies. Yeah, how about that uh, potato truck out there? I'm salivating already for right? some French fries or potatoes. Love that. <laughs> Love that stuff. Good morning, ladies. Good morning to you at home. We begin this Friday morning's headlines talking about how police continue to test a backpack involved in a bomb scare in Albuquerque recently. Investigators say a man in his 30s claimed he had a bomb and caused chaos at the Pro's Ranch Market on the west side yesterday afternoon. Now they say this man was involved in some sort of a dispute at the store a few days ago and apparently came back with a backpack and a small piece of luggage claiming he had a bomb. Now, this entire area was locked down at Central and Atrisco at peak at the peak of rush hour yesterday. The suspect ended up surrendering about an hour and a half later. Officers found no explosives, but again, they are testing his backpack and bag. Another battle is brewing over publishing the names and salaries of state workers on the state's transparency website. Governor Susana Martinez says she plans to put the names on a different state website after a judge ordered her to remove the names from the state's Sunshine Portal. The Supreme Court ruled that it was not proper for us to have classified employees' names and their salaries on the Sunshine Portal. But we were able to have that uh, published to the public on any other website. The governor says she's not putting any information up that the public can't get by filing a records request. She says she's just doing it to make things easier and to be completely transparent. The governor's office says the new site should be live in a few weeks. New information this morning about a big scandal plaguing the New Mexico Finance Authority. The authority board has now suspended Chief Executive Officer Rick May with pay. Board members say suspending him is just part of a process of getting the agency back on track after two other officials were arrested on securities violations. I think it shows that the board is very concerned about 
making sure that NMFA is righted as quickly as possible and that we're going to do what we need to do to uh, make sure that the state is on financial sound ground. COO John Duff is also suspended. He and former controller Greg Campbell were arrested on Wednesday. Investigators say they were involved in a fake audit that made the agency's revenue look stronger and hide the fact that the legislature weakened the agency's financial position by taking $40 million from it to help with the general budget crunch. Now, Deputy Energy Miller, Minerals and Natural Resources Secretary Brett Woods has been named interim CEO for now. The I-25 Paseo Interchange project may have hit another roadblock. The plan we've been reporting on to overhaul the interchange would cost $93 million. $50 million of that would come from the city if voters approve it in November. But the state attorney general's office is now saying putting the issue on the general election ballot is not legal. In order for it to be a ballot question, it must actually be a county or state issue. And this is really more seen as a city issue. There are always stumbling blocks. There's always somebody that can say no. But the fact of the matter is we need to get it done. And as a mayor, I want to be on the front of driving that project forward, and we're going to do that. A final decision is expected to be made by the Secretary of State next week on what to do. By the way, Mayor R.J. Berry says he'll work to try to make the project happen regardless by asking the City Council to once again fund it or by holding possibly a special election in December. All right, parents, heads up. The Department of Health is asking you to vaccinate your kids before school starts. Officials say there's been a significant surge in pertussis in New Mexico. There are all nearly 1,800 cases nationwide right now. A two-month-old baby recently died this year from whooping cough right here in the state of New Mexico. However, that uh, child was too young to be vaccinated. Nonetheless, it is a serious uh, illness, serious disease, and uh, you want to make sure that your kiddos are, in fact, vaccinated before they go to school. And speaking of school starting very soon, APS students will head back to class next week. Cannot believe it's already here for them. Monday is the first day of school, and there are a lot of changes to talk about that many of your kiddos will see regarding some of those changes around um, individual schools and other changes will likely affect everyone. So listen up, here's the breakdown. All APS schools follow a set of dress codes, but changes will be coming to at least two high schools, Volcano Vista and El Dorado. That's where students will have to wear shirts with sleeves, sagging your pants or having skirts or shorts too high at any school, obviously, uh, won't make the dress code. Hats and caps are discouraged during school hours unless while doing outdoor activity. And for the second year in a row, the price for lunches for students will be going up a dime. Now that comes out to about $1.90, $1.95 to be exact for elementary kids and about two twenty dollars for high schoolers. The meals are also expected to be a lot healthier Officials say it's a good idea to check in with your child's individual schools and check their websites on specifics before Monday uh, starts. For the most part, there are no district-wide changes that are going to have huge implications other than the introduction of uh, Discovery Education, which we're going to go over in a presentation next week. All right, for more on this story and every detail you need to know about getting your child ready for school, head to krqb.com. We've set up a, a link there with a lot of information for you. All right, and lastly, a unique local comedian has generated millions of laughs and has become a YouTube sensation. We're talking about Lynette the Burqueña. She is back, and as News 13's Scott Daniel reports, She's been hired to bring back the crowds at the state fair this year, along with some laughs, of course. Do you want a Coke? Do you want a Coke? She's the web's Coke? most famous Burkenya. Lynette, played by New Mexican native Lauren Poole, has reached more than one million hits on YouTube. A la magina. Now she's taking her talents and slang to TV. Meet me at the fair. State fair officials are trying to ride the viral video wave. They say it's creating the biggest splash in the fair's ad campaign history. For reals? <laughs>
Michael Henningsen is the media director. We don't have the budget this year that we um, once had when the economy was better, and so we've really had to watch, um, watch the bottom line and make sure that our money is spent wisely. Henningsen says the fair used to have up to three quarters of a million dollars to spend on ads. Now it's less than half of that. They hired an inexpensive local production team and of course Lauren Poole to play her famous character because the media director thinks people who attend the fair can relate to her funny antics. So far it's gotten positive reviews. It also helps that Poole spends her summers at the fairgrounds too. I guess my biggest thing is going for the old ladies that make the pies the petting zoo and the rides. In the ads that started airing on TV last week, Lynette gives her ideas to make the fair better this year. Rodeo, full contact jousting, acrobats, that's his thing. They would just let me riff as that character. And I want everything, even like a Michael Jackson laser light show. We've got that this year. For reals? The fair director assures Lynette everything new she suggests the fair will have come September 12th. Reporting from Budke, Scott Daniels. KRQE News 13 signing off. For reals? I wonder if that now is in the dictionary. I gotta look that up, right? You know, she's poking fun at some of the things some Albuquerque folks say, but of course it's all in the name of fun. By the way, the media director for the fair says they have a lot of extra footage of Lynette that they will put on a web page, especially if the positive feedback continues. And they are, in fact, getting positive feedback. That wraps it up for your Friday morning headlines. Be sure to catch <laughs> Matt, Kristen, and myself every weekday morning on KRQE News 13 beginning at 4.30 a.m. For reals? For reals. <laughs> yeah, what is it? E? <laughs> I'm still learning. I'm still learning the slang. Yeah. I'll learn it. I, I, hey, if somebody wants to... Nikki, I, if anyone's going to learn it, I know it's going to be you. <laughs> yes. I do I do enjoy impersonating accents mm -hmm. and dialect, so yes. thank you, yes. Yeah. Well, hey, if anybody wants to do an exchange, I'll give you a little Jersey lesson. You give me a New Mexico right. lesson in slang, and you give a I'll Southern, southern. lesson. I'll, you do I'll, southern. It's not hard for me to slip right back in. We can all slip into our slang easy. <laughs> not for nothing, but forget about it. We can do that. <laughs> so, okay, so now this is interesting. We've been talking all week about something. I've been getting a lot of emails, a lot of phone calls, people asking, oh, Oh, should I do it? Should I do it? Should I do it? Mm -hmm. Well, if you feel like you want to do it, do it. The search continues for the new face of Fox, and the winner will join our team in October. The final live audition is today from 11 to 3 at Coronado Mall in the Macy's Court, so at a different location from last time, Macy's Court. If you can't make it, there's still time to submit a one-minute video. Visit Casa.com for all the details there, and the deadline for entries is next Friday, August 17th, so again, get out there today. Yeah, I'll be there. Elias will be there, so, you know, come on over, say hello. We'll give you some advice, and this is really your chance to win a one-year contract with two Casa Fox and get paid for doing something that you've always wanted to do like on TV so yeah, yeah. but there's more to it than that you're not just a face so you know if you've been watching the specials and listening to us there's a lot of hard work there's a lot of work right I mean yeah. he works really hard so you know just know that and if you're willing to do the work believe me you'll get the benefits it'll be fun mm -hmm. now you may wonder do you take what it has to be the face of Fox well do you think what that you might have what it takes to be a hero because that's a whole other thing the Santa Fe County Public Safety Department and Sheriff's Office is recruiting candidates now for the Sheriff's Office Corrections Department Fire Department and Regional Emergency Communication Center tomorrow at the Santa Fe County Fairgrounds. Public Safety Recruitment Day is from 9 to 1. Applications will be available on site, but get ready to get physical. The Sheriff's Office and Fire Department will be testing agility levels, and the mm. Corrections Department will be demonstrating defensive tactics. You Ooh. could do this. You could do this. Yeah. Applicants need to bring a copy of their high school diploma or equivalent, as well as their driver's license, and then individuals participating in agility tests are reminded to wear appropriate clothing, mm -hmm. especially with this heat, right? Oh gosh, yeah. You're yeah. going to definitely want to drink a lot of water, wear a lot of sunscreen, and yeah. dress coolly. Stay For hydrated. more information, just visit SantaFeCountyNM.gov. Nice. All right, Trash and Fashion mm. takes recycling to a whole new level. This unique fashion show sponsored by Keep Albuquerque Beautiful challenges designers to create outfits using up recycled materials. That means instead of buying new fabric and materials, they must create their outfits using reclaimed, recycled, and found materials. Yeah, and each outfit will make its debut on the catwalk. Background music will be provided by youth members of Warehouse 505, and Intermission Entertainment will be providing a musical group Basura, which is Spanish for trash. And band, it's good trash, good trash, not trashy. And band members will play instruments made of trash. I mean, it's like a whole theme going here. Yes. Right? Get some, yeah, I, you remember this song in Ain't Misbehaving, get some cash for your trash. Well, this is the time you can get some fashion for your trash. Fashion for your trash. Fashion for your trash. Ooh, and I feel it so disco today. Do, do I look like I'm about to go to Studio 54? 
I mm -hmm. feel I feel like I'm about to go to Studio 54. I want to see I want to see what this uh, fashion trash looks like. Take a look. Trash and Fashion is with, uh, we're partnering with Keep Albuquerque Beautiful, and it's a fashion show. Uh, most of the uh, young people are making costumes, making their outfits, and uh, we hope to raise awareness about recycling and keeping Albuquerque beautiful. Recycling in Albuquerque is very important. Uh, each year annually, as the city of Albuquerque residentially, we throw away approximately 500,000 tons of garbage into the landfill every year. Um, we want to reduce that land, the, how much trash we throw into the landfill uh, for future generations. So if we can recycle, we keep it out of the landfill, the landfill, um, it, we extend the life of the landfill. So recycling is a really important part to that diversion process. Trash and Fashion is tomorrow oh. from 2 to 5. Look at that. Wow. It's at Warehouse 508. For more information, call 311 or visit KeepAlbuquerqueBeautiful.com. That was a cool dress. That was I liked so it. so cool. Oh my gosh, I'm excited now about this. Let's, we'll see what happens with that. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. very well, cool. local dance company Dance Exposé is celebrating 20 years of dance this weekend with the premier performance of Don't Stop at Sandia Prep Theater. And Dance Exposé is a fusion of classical ballet and Broadway with a little Las Vegas style mm -hmm. glitz and glamour mixed that will have audiences on the edge of their seats. And Dance Exposé proves that you're never too old to follow your dreams because these performers actually range in age age between 18 and 50 years old. It's pretty cool. You know, with a dancer's cool. life is usually short-lived and it's nice to know they can keep on dancing all the way up to 50 in a group like this. Oh yeah, I love that. You can catch Don't Stop at Sandia Prep Theater this weekend. Visit danceexpose.org for more information and for more performance details and tickets. Great. And the greatest part of all is that Dance Expose will donate a portion of the proceeds to Bernalillo County's Summer Youth Programs, giving underprivileged children exposure to arts and culture. Love that. Also this weekend, the Santa Fe show will showcase unique and extraordinary art ranging from contemporary to historic to antique to modern. More than 70 prestigious exhibitors will display an impressive variety of objects of art, making this the city difference, different summer show. Yeah, and the Santa Fe show is this weekend and next at El Museo, and you can visit the show.com for all the details. In fact, you can also go to Casa.com, check it out on our, uh, on our actual website because we did a segment. You'll get a little more detail in that segment link as well from yesterday. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing, a Hollywood franchise is Oh. Born again, get it? And the 2012 election gets funny in the campaign. Fox's Ashley Dvorkin shows us what's new in entertainment. Jeremy Renner carries on the Born legacy, starring as Aaron Cross, another agent on the run in the fourth installment of this action-packed franchise. That's my baby to kiss. Months before the November election, funny men Will Ferrell and Zach Galifianakis make a run for office. The box office, that is going for over-the-top laughs in their political comedy, The Campaign, as long-term incumbent and an unlikely challenger. Do you want to go to intensive couples counseling? <laughs> Academy Award winners Meryl Streep and Tommy Lee Jones bring the heartfelt Hope Springs about empty nesters looking to rekindle their relationship through a week-long intensive therapy session with Steve Carell guiding their way. My uh, girlfriend's family. Just got in fresh from Paris. Also exploring relationship and family dynamics, the limited release film Two Days in New York, starring Chris Rock. Goatman took me on my first trek when I was 11. When I was a baby, my father left and Goatman stayed. It's not the only small flick in the mix. David Duchovny plays a goat herder who lives in a pool house, just part of the unique family we meet in Goats. It's about money, fear, and respect. Robert De Niro and 50 Cent team up for the rogue cop thriller Freelancers. For an adrenaline rush, Travis Pastrana and team bring their antics in 3D with Nitro Circus, the movie. Who does that person need? Me. You embarrass me. Writer-director Spike Lee is out with Red Hook Summer, about a boy's life-changing summer with his grandfather in the Brooklyn Project. So which stars will you race to spend your summer with? You don't know how to trash talk, do you? Take your pick with many campaigning for your attention at the movies. In New York, Ashley Dvorkin, Fox News. That does look funny. Ah, oh, some good stuff coming out. <laughs> That's going to be good. And if you want to get in the air conditioning, which you might want to do, mm -hmm. that would be a good thing to do this weekend, right? Yeah, it's going to be really hot, but clear skies in place, so, so good news for the Perseus meteor shower. Mm. If you're a fan of that, this weekend should be a good time to look at it. 
make sure you stay up late at night. Tomorrow night, Saturday night, not too bad of a night to stay up late. Uh, 60 to 80 perhaps per hour and a waning crescent moon means there won't be too much light to oh, to outshine some of those meteors. 76 degrees right now, clear skies in place as we go through the day. Temperatures back into the middle and upper 90s with dry conditions for Albuquerque. Only a few spot showers are possible for the northern mountains and back across. Uh, the western high terrain, four corners may see a few showers and storms too. More of the same for the weekend, though a better chance for a few showers in the Sacramento Mountains and the Gila for tomorrow. Highs today, 96 in Albuquerque, triple digit heat out east, upper 80s for Santa Fe. Your seven day forecast here will stay hot and dry through the weekend with a better chance for rain moving in early next week.